So uh, this morning we had a generator test, which uh, causes the battery to on the UPS to go on for a little bit. And um, came in this morning just to check on things and had a little smell. So after sniffing around, found out that it's this uh, battery backup here, and uh, one of the batteries is bad. Um, but I have a little. A temperature sensor here, thermal, um, infrared or whatever you want to call it. So 70 degrees there, 74, 77 there, and 106, 107, 108 there. So this is obviously, uh, there you go, 115 on there. So this is obviously, uh, wow, look at that, like 130. So when we get inside of this, it's going to be even hotter. Uh, so we're going to take this out, hopefully not blow ourselves up as we do this. So, looks like it's already out. It's hot. It's really hot. Alright, so it's disconnected. And then it uh, knows that there's been a battery decrease there. Oops, of course that's not going to help you guys. So, let's see how hot this guy is. Oh look, all the batteries are bulged and it's leaking battery fluid. That's great. I've had bad batteries before but never had the uh, battery acid actually leak out of there. So that's why it was smelling pretty bad this morning. So, 100 and 70 degrees. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Could have gotten really nasty. So this has probably been going on over a couple days, but uh, the generator test is what caused it to uh, go under load. So that's what's caused the uh, batteries to overheat this much. So the fun things of IT. So I'm going to let that sit for a couple hours and I'll come back a little bit later and check on it. So I got this battery out and this thing's still pretty hot. It's been about an hour, uh, but it's still pretty hot. So I'm going to take it outside in case something happens with it again. It's probably only been uh, doing this for about uh, two or three hours, so it probably needs a little time to cool off. But in the event that it uh, is shorting out, I just wanted to uh, get it out here and outside in case something happens with it. So I might go ahead and take the top off of it carefully. I'm not going to move anything, but take the top off. <clears throat> See what's inside. Yeah, those are pretty bad. So, yeah, I've had this happen once before with these type of batteries, and you can see the different cells in there. Those up front uh, aren't too bad. They'll obviously, all need to be replaced, but um, those right there are really bad, and we can see some battery juice leaking out on these. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect some of the leads uh, down here so that the circuit is not connected anymore in case it is shorting out so there's a one side of the leads here the other side's right down there can't quite reach it um, but I'll go ahead and just disconnect this one down here 135 139 140 there 140 there so they cooled off a little bit from the 160 surface temperature on the outside of the case. I've had this battery out here for a while and it was still pretty hot and I had the leads inside of here still connected. I had this back one off and this one um, but it was still pretty hot so I went through. I got a 
little piece of wood and took all of the contacts off down there. I think these two batteries were shorting each other out, uh, which was keeping it pretty hot. So the temperature about 20 minutes ago was 137. Um, and so now they've decreased. So I've taken the batteries out of the actual container here, the little shelf that they're in. And something that's funny is that they are all fused together. They got so hot uh, that it's all just one big battery. And that one came off. But and this one here also is one nice big battery. So I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to try to mess with it too much here. Um, so uh, these are a lot cooler than they used to be. So they're pretty stable now. So um, it's probably good that I actually took those connectors off because they were probably shorting themselves out. Um, so now I'm going to um, replace the batteries. So here I've got uh, some batteries picked up from Batteries Plus. They're all right. They're Duracell. I've been using these for a while. Um, so our cost is uh, pretty cheap on these. Um, they're like 16 bucks each. So uh, it takes 10 batteries for these, so 160 bucks uh, of batteries. And um, if we were to buy this a whole unit new um, from like Amazon or from APC or whatever, they're going to pay uh, at least 200 250 maybe even more for a battery pack. haven't checked the price in a while, but um, I've been doing this for quite a while, just replacing the batteries, and it's a lot cheaper for sure. So we're just going to line these all up and then just slide it on. So um, we got all the batteries out and have them lined up. Uh, like they were before and um, again as I mentioned we've been doing this for a while at work uh, with these batteries so just to make sure I always get the wiring correct I printed this out and I usually leave it with the spare parts um, but it just shows the main thing to look at is where this uh, little lead right here goes so it's going to come all the way down um, through here and it's going to hook up down here. Um, so it's just important to make sure that that's wired in there correctly. I've got these batteries wired up now. I usually set them up um, just standing up and wire them. Um, you just got to make sure you have them uh, lay down correctly. Um, then I've got my little wire connected here at the end. Uh, so I've got that set up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and lay these down. You just take them one at a time and plop them down. Um, they'll all go down. And do the other side. It's a little hard with the phone here. So I have those all laying down. And um, this white wire should actually be on top. Um, if you have any connectors that were damaged, I've had some before where the actual uh, jumpers are damaged, um, you want to replace those and just make sure you use a heavy gauge wire um, because it's actually passing the load over it. Uh, this small wire here I think, I think is just for uh, battery testing and checking the status, so that's why it's thinner, but this actually puts a load over it. Uh, looks like it's a 10 gauge or a 10 AWG wire. Um, it's kind of a little hard to find these clips, but if you just use a regular electrical uh, clip on the end, it should be fine. So I've got the little plastic piece back in here. Um, a lot of times these tabs break off uh, just because when it gets hot and whatnot, um, makes the plastic brittle. Um, that's mainly to keep the batteries from sliding, otherwise sometimes they'll short out, but I haven't had an issue with that. Um, Sometimes most of the tabs are broken off, but that's all right. So I go ahead and put that in, and then squeeze them all together. And then the next step is uh, usually lay this on the ground. Just bring this little slot in there and just start putting them up on there one at a time. Um, you'll see down here is a little stop to keep the battery from uh, going all the way to the end. Uh, so just make sure you push your batteries up against that pretty well. Um, just make sure everything's smooth on there so that the cover goes on good. Um, 
then just make sure everything's connected again. So I've got everything buttoned up in there. Um, just double check everything, make sure all your screws are in good, which mine hopefully should be. So the UPS, this is in, I think it's a 6000, so Metro RM6000. Um, it's got three battery bays on the right, and then we got the power modules on the left. Um, and then there's like some management portion in here, and then up here is the uh, converter box that basically transforms it, a transformer box that transforms it from 20, I think it's 208, 208 volts to a uh, 110 uh, step down transformer, I think is what they call it. So we're going to go ahead and put that in here. Right now we got a run time of 16 minutes, it's at 44% load, uh, so we're going to go ahead and grab this and put it in. So before I put it in all the way, I just wanted to uh, point out a couple things. Just make sure it goes in clear. Um, I've had some modules that, or some of these, that if, you, if it goes in tight, you probably don't have the top on correctly, so just go ahead and uh, take it out and fix it, because otherwise if you ever have the expansion batteries like I just showed you, uh, it's going to be really difficult to get out at that point. So make sure it slides in good. Um, so we slide it in. I'll tighten that down in a second. It basically says our batteries have increased. So press any key uh, instead of escape. Uh, so we've got 26 minute run time. Uh, one other thing to mention is on your load, um, we use redundant UPSs. So we have one over here as well. Um, and try to, in the way we have it is each server uh, is basically connected to both UPS in case one fails and just make sure your load is below 40 or sorry below 50 percent uh, 45 is still cutting it close um, but that way if, if one UPS has to take the full load of uh, basically double the servers uh, that it won't uh, overload so so all right so the battery's in uh, one other thing so this room I'm just gonna measure the floor temperature uh, 68 degree on the floor um, the reason I bought this a couple years ago was just a te test for hot spots on the battery or on the in our different UPS's so every once in a while I'll just come by and uh, run this scan on our different batteries and uh, this is the one I just put in so if it's running hot you know that those batteries are probably uh, maybe starting to go bad or whatever um, so these usually run right around 70 degrees so I'm not too worried about those but each of your UPS's will run different based on its you know basically environmental temperature its load how often it runs on battery so it's the next day and just to finish up this video uh, to show it's still running 44 percent load Run time's 28 minutes, and I'm just going to check the temperature on that battery module. And you can see it's 71, 73 degrees there, so that's pretty good. Um, so just uh, definitely cheaper to replace your own batteries, and just got to be careful with how you do it and just make sure you're not doing anything that would uh, cause them to rupture, explode, etc. And I'm sure you can find some literature online of how to do this uh, and any safety precautions. So, hope you enjoy this video and good luck.